Hey, Periscope. Hey, Facebook. Come on, come on. Try to give you all enough time. It, I said at noon, so hopefully you all was ready for me. It is 12.15 my time on noon day on 10.30, 2019. Our last Wednesday for praying in the harvest. Praying in the harvest. So on in November, our title will be... Uh, praying Thanksgiving prayers every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Our theme for November will be uh, thank, a thankful heart. So in November, every Wednesday at 6 a.m., our theme will be a thanks, a thankful, a thankful heart. So thank y'all for coming on. Those who can make it, please share. I want to pray today. Uh, it's 12, like I said, I already told y'all what time it is. Please catch me on the replay. Uh, play while you eat lunch later on or while you laying in the bed later on or doing something or washing dishes. But I want to pray. This is our last Wednesday in October. I hope everything is going well with you. God is awesome. He's a good God. He's a magnificent God. Thank you all for coming on. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, how you doing? Please share. I'm just going to pray today. Pray this um, this afternoon. I kind of like noonday prayer. I don't know. I might consider changing it from 6 a.m., but I like 6 a.m. too, to because uh, that's, you know, like starting your morning off. But I, I remember when I was growing up, or not growing up, but when I was in uh, this um, uh, this particular church, we used to have what we call noonday prayer. And in noonday prayer, we used to pray noonday and then, you know, expect God to do miracles and blessings. I used to go to different services for noonday prayer. It was like a big thing to do noonday prayer. So I kind of thought about it this morning when I was like, oh, when I sent that, like, oh, I'm not going to be able to get on until 12 to noon time. I said, this might be a good time to consider maybe redoing it and uh, see my hula hoops. I need to get on this hula hoop today. Periscope can see it. Facebook can't see it. But um, anyway, need to uh, th consider, y'all, you know, maybe see what y'all think about me coming on Noonday. Because I do everything else pretty much Noonday. I do um, Mondays, Fresh Start Mondays, around noon, 12.30ish. And then I do uh, Issues of Life, different times, 1, 1, 32. But y'all catch me on the replay anyway. So I'm just trying to give people a few more minutes to come on that I can see. Thank y'all for coming on. So praying in the harvest, praying in the harvest. The month of October was praying in the harvest. And our scripture came from Amos that the reaper will overtake the plowman. Meaning that be, as soon as you can get your seed in the ground, financial seed, your prayer seed, your time seed, that you will begin to reap it before it can even get in the ground. I remember a testimony uh, that a lady uh, that was given a testimony and uh, it's coming to my mind right now. And the preacher was telling the testimony and the, the minister of the gospel, she said that the lady said to God, hey, I'm going to give X amount of dollars. This just came to my mind right now while I'm sitting here. I'm going to give X amount of dollars. And when she said she was going to give X amount of dollars, before she wrote the check out, before she was able to send it, she says, I'm going to do it by such and such date or whatever. Before she could get it out of her mouth, the thing that she was sowing the seed for came in because of what she said, because of her commitment, because she says, I'm going to give X amount of dollars at this given time. Before she even did the actual thing, she spoke it. She said it. She made a vow. She made a commitment. Y'all, that is huge. And before she can even get the seed in the ground, y'all, she already received what the seed she was sowing for already came into manifestation. So I want to say to you guys, I want to say to you guys, Whatever it is that you was believing God for, for the month of October, <clears throat> go ahead on and declare what your seed is. If you have not sown your seed or sown a seed, sow the seed, name it. Just like you can have apple seed, orange seeds, plum seeds, uh, watermelon seeds. Oh, I think I'm glad I just thought about that. I'm taking my watermelon out. 
and go ahead on and say, God, I'm going to give X amount of dollars to um, uh, Money Sign, Linda K. Lee. Linda K. Lee. I'm going to give Cash App, Linda K. Lee. I'm going to give this amount of money. <clears throat> and I'm believing for this. <clears throat> I'm going to give as well. Or you can do PayPal me forward slash info swat <clears throat> and slash and whatever you want to put on there. And I'm going to say, God, this is my seed. I am praying with Linda K. I am believing you for this. And this woman, I ju it just came to my mind. It was not rehearsed. I didn't think of this, this testimony that I remember recall. It's been over two or three years that I heard this testimony. And I was, before I got on, I was kind of taking my time getting on. And before I got, I said, God, what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to pray in the harvest, but I like to get a people a word. I didn't get anything until I hit the button. I was going to pray regular, worship God, which we're going to do, call God in, give, glorify God. That's all I was going to do. And soon I hit the button, that's when I got the testimony of that woman. I know it's got to be over three years since that I gave that, that I heard that testimony. And I'm saying to you, it goes with that, the scripture in Amos where we pray, when we declare at the beginning of the year, praying the harvest, that before the plowman can plow, the, you, the reaper's going to already be reaping the seed. We're lifting up that scripture from the Old Testament to make it relevant for us on today to pray in our seed manifestation. I'm going to make a vow and I'm no longer, I know I didn't pray this, I didn't believe this, but I am going to pray, I am going to sow a direct seed in uh, cash out, Linda K. Lee, I'm going for whatever it is. And I am believing you, God, because she's going to touch and agree with me. We're going to believe God for your manifestation of what I'm believing God for. I got several things I'm believing for a couple of my kids. And as soon as I get off here, I'm going to cash app that. And I'm going to say, or I'm going to put in PayPal.me, whatever I got to do. And, uh, or I'm just going to go to uh, our church website and, and, and donate to Linda H. Lee. Uh, you can tie the 73256, put in the word Judah, J-U-D-A-H, and it will bring you up a link. And then you can click on the link. And then you can do the down Chevron and click on Linda H. Lee Ministries. And then you can sow a seed because I am believing God right now that what I'm going to name my seed, I am going to see a harvest from that seed. I'm just going to go ahead on the speaking while I'm praying now. And before I even sow the seed, I'm going to see the manifestation of that seed. I've been believing God for a couple of family members. I've been believing God for some things for my own body. I was laying in the bed the other day and I said, God, heal my system. Heal my blood system. Heal my thyroid system. I'm still believing God for the healing. I believe God for the manifestation of my healing. I'm going to sow toward it. People can say, no, you can't buy no healing. No, you cannot. But I can sow a seed. I can sow a seed. And y'all ain't nobody going to stop me from believing. I can't help what other folks doing. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this. The enemy really want to shut my mouth. I'm telling you. The enemy really want to shut your mouth. Periscope. Facebook. You hear me talking to you? The enemy really want to shut your mouth. She roars. You got to speak what thus said the Lord or what the word of God said. If you don't get nothing in your spirit, say what the word of God said. This morning I was reading my uh, daily uh, word in, in, in Jeremiah, I think it's 47. Jeremiah, it said that, um, oh, what did it say? It said that the king is making noise. And it's time, the appointed time has now passed. All I said, it lifted off those pages. The devil has been making noise. He been saying what you're not going to be. You do well, you run well, then you fall back, and then you get back up, you fall back, and you get back up. And the devil has been making noise, but his appointed time is now over. When I read that scripture, it lifted off the page in Jeremiah in the New King James Version. I think it's in 47, something like that. I wrote it down. It's in another room. I will read it to you. I didn't know I was even going to say it. And it said, I think in the 17th verse, it says that the king, the pharaohs, um, uh, is making noise. 
He said it ain't nothing but noise. The devil ain't doing nothing but, but making a bunch of noise. That noise in your head. That noise that you ain't going to never make it. <clears throat> that noise that you ain't going to never. I'm, uh, I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But today we're sowing the seed. We're closing out the month of October praying in the harvest. We're going to name our seed. And we're going to believe God. That the noise that we've been hearing that's been of the enemy, because God don't make noise. The enemy make a bunch of noise. And it keeps you derailed and distracted from what God has for you. Men of God, I'm telling you. Women of God, that's anybody that served the Lord. Anyone up under my voice that believe in God for certain things. The enemy is making a bunch of noise so you can't hear the soft, quiet voice of God. And God said, Lunda, don't stop believing. Don't stop praying. Don't stop roaring. Don't stop declaring. <clears throat> don't stop believing. Don't stop having faith. All that is noise, noise, noise. The church making noise. Noise meaning is no definitive or de uh, 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 definitive or uh, what do you want to call it? Distinct. Distinct. There's no distinct declaration of words. It's just noise. Ah, 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 it's just a bunch of noise. Oh, glory. It's just noise. God said, I am giving you a distinct word, a distinct prophecy, a distinct clarification. I am opening up your eyes. I am going to show you the glory. I am going to show you your direction. I am going to give you instruction. So sow your seed. Don't sit back and wait. Oh, well, let me see. I am going to speak, God. I want to declare. I want to, I want to, I want to believe you for a significant significant seed. Not just, oh, I'm going to give a dollar. Oh, I'm going to just do five dollars. No, God, I got a significant thing I'm believing you for. I sow seeds all the time, but I am going to name this seed and I am expecting the deliverance of my children. I am expecting the deliverance of my spouse. I'm expecting the deliverance of my church. I'm expecting deliverance of me. I'm expecting the healing in my body. I'm expecting that my health shall spring forth. That's what I'm believing God for. So you believe God for what you need to believe God for in the name of Jesus. Father God, we come before you right now. Father God, we thank you. You are good God. You are an awesome God. You are a magnificent God. You are a wonderful God. We thank you for the word, God. We thank you, God, for praying in the harvest, the month of October. We thank you, God, that the seed that we're declaring that we're going to sow, I speak my seed right now, God. You hear my seed in my mind because I don't want to let the people know what I'm sowing. I want them to sow whatever they want to sow. But, Father God, I thank you for Jubilee. I thank you for the number 50. I thank you for a thousand fold. I thank you for the thousand, God. I thank you for 2020. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, for how you bring it clarity. I thank you, God, for instruction. I thank you, God. You are the most high, God. You are the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. We worship you on today, God. We thank you for noonday prayer, God. We give you glory, God. We honor you, God. We thank you. You are the God of the harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the labor are few. I pray right now, God, that the labors, God, that we are are the laborers. You anoint us. You appoint us. You help us. You assist us. You help us to be what you called us to be. Father God, no longer will we sit back idle. No longer will we be like women laden with sin and people coming into our homes through TV, through YouTube and whatever to lay. They don't have to literally come in our house. But God, you said over in Timothy, as I was reading, that the uh, people come in, men come in and continue to cause the women to be in lust, to cause the women not to hear the word of God, to cause us to be dormant, to cause us to shut up. This is the time for us to roar. It is the time for you to speak. It is the time for you to declare Declare what thus said the Lord is not God is not waiting on you to feel it. He's not waiting on you to see it. He's waiting on you to declare it. He's not waiting on you to see it. He's not waiting on you to feel it. He's waiting on you to declare it. Declare thus said the Lord. Declare what you believe. Declare what God is saying. I thank you, God, that everything that the enemy meant for harm, everything the enemy is trying to hold us back. Father God, I thank you, God. I see. I see right now even the harvest, God. Father God, that our ground has been hard. It has been hard. And I see literally the rain softening up, the Holy Spirit softening up our ground. Even though we've been praying, it's been like, like this, like this. 
like this, like hard, like hard labor, trying to dig up the dirt, trying to dig up the dirt. And the dirt has it's been dusty. It's been dusty in your life. You've been going to church. You've been trying to read your word. You've been trying to go to seminars. You've been trying to listen to YouTube. But I hear the spirit of God saying, I have released the rain. I have released the rain, the softening of the Lord, the thing to make your life more pliable, pliable. Now I'm going to make your, your life more pliable. That now they just feel like it's just hard. Every time you try to pray, it feels like an iron. Uh, it's like, it's like I'm praying. But I just don't feel like nothing's going through. Anybody with me? It's like I'm, I'm doing what the words say. I'm doing what they saying. But I feel like it's just like an a iron ceiling. God says that the rain has been released. Thank you for the rain, God. Thank you, God, for the spiritual rain. Even though it's literally raining in our uh, uh, re our area, but I hear the spiritual rain of God that is softening up your ground. And I was just talking to someone the other day, just coming back to my mind, that I said that you have to go in the dirt, in the darkness, in order to come up to the light. Every seed has to be planted in the dirt. I don't know how that it has to go in the dirt and the dirt do all the work and then it comes through the ground and it receives the sunlight. But if you put the seed on top of the ground, you can't put your seed on top of the ground. You can't be doing lip service. You got to live that thing. You got to speak that thing. You got to believe that thing because the seed needs to go in the dirt. That means you're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulation. The word of God that's been coming to me in the last couple of weeks. Y'all don't even want to speak it. It's been coming in me long suffering. I don't like the word suffering and I don't like nothing to talk about long to go with the suffering. And I also heard the word self-control. And every time I pick up the Bible or read something or hear something, I keep hearing it through some kind of way. Just, uh, uh, um, uh, What's the word? Long suffering, self control, self control. Those are the two things I've been hearing: self control, long suffering, self control, long suffering. God will empower yourself to control yourself. God will empower yourself to control yourself. God will empower you. One of the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control and another one is long suffering. That means he'll give you the ability to walk out the thing that's been going on for a year, been going on for three years. But now God said, I have released the rain to that desert thing, that thing that you've been going through for a long time. This right here is not... <clears throat> It's not a three weeks thing. It's not a four weeks thing. This is something that you've been dealing with. If so regular now that you don't even realize it's just a part of your every day. It just, you, you, you just have accepted it. It is called long suffering. You've been going on with the same illness. You've been going on with the same situation, the same thing on your job, the same thing at your church, the same thing in your body, self control. The thing you say, I'm trying to stop masturbating. Every time I stop that same, that time of that month comes and I still masturbate. I don't want to be masturbating. I want to stop masturbating. Whatever that thing is, I don't know why that came out, but it's for somebody. It's like, I, I just get so heated and hot. I just, I just be wanting, wanting to just get it off of me. And hey, that's between you and God. Don't ask me, is that a sin? I don't, I don't have no scripture to, to base it up, but it's something in your heart. You don't feel good after you finish doing it. So if you don't feel good after you finish doing it, then it ain't good for you. So you want, I hear God say, I'm going to help you. It's going to break today. I command it to break today. The thing you saying, I'm trying to keep myself. I'm trying not to. I know you ain't got to give me no hearts. You ain't got to give me no hearts. I already know you go like, is it wrong? Is it, it ain't about it. Is it wrong? It's what you feel inside once you finish it. When you do it. What it does. Self-control. You need self-control. I don't know where it came from. Holy Spirit reveal. No condemnation. Y'all, no condemnation. God can deliver you from lust. God can deliver you from pornography. God can deliver you from alcoholism. God can deliver you from smoking weed. I know, you know, smoking weed might be, you know, all popular now. It does this and making it look good. But yeah, hey, alcohol was bad one time. Now they made it legal. But you know what's not good for you. God's saying self-control for you. You know what it does to your mind. And you know, uh, I had a boyfriend years, years ago. 
And we found out, I mean, he knows smoke weed, 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 smoke, 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 and found out that it makes your sperm count low, makes your sperm count low. And then, so they don't tell you about all that. But anyway, you can look that up for yourself. I hear God saying the rain has been released. I am making your ground pliable. I am making your ground doable for seed. That the seed that you now sow, your financial seed that you now sow, you're going to see an increase. It ain't just me talking out of my mouth. I'm telling you what I hear the Spirit of God say. It is up to you. Everybody won't receive it. it. I'm not mad about it. Hear me. I won't be losing no sleep. I won't be trying to check. I, I don't even go and check to see. Who who liked it? I don't even be going to say, if y'all don't been and said a comment, I done went on to the next thing. I'll be on to next Wednesday praying Thanksgiving prayers. I'm telling you right now, I don't be like, who, who watching me? Who's seeing it? I mean, every now and then, Facebook will send me a thing and say that, oh, this been running well. That's the only way I be knowing. Oh, you need to boost this for $25 or boost. I'm not boosting nothing. If they want it, they'll share it, whatever. If you believe God, you say, well, I give seeds all the time. I give t- seeds on, on the T. TV and all that, but that's on the TV. Here's a live person talking to you right now. And if you agree with that, then you do what you believe the Lord is saying to you. And I hear the God saying that your ground has been hard and he has sent the rain and he is now making your ground soft, pliable, where you can plant the seed and the seed can come forth speedily, quickly, because it's spiritual. We do natural things to get spiritual things. We get do natural things to receive spiritual things because what's done in the natural yields the spirit. You can say what you want to say. Why why we got to talk? Why we got to pray? Why we got to say these things? Because from your mouth, God ushers in. God said, you speak a thing, I'll bring a thing. You declare a thing, I'll bring it to pass. You call those things that be not as though they are. Open up your mouth. Walk around the house. I don't care how foolish you sound. Say it, say it, say it. Believe it. Talk it. Say what the Lord has said. Speak what the Lord has said. Say what the word said. And Jeremiah said today that the enemy been making a bunch of noise, but his appointed time has now passed. Let me prove it to you. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted of the devil and that Jesus, that the devil would come and try to harass Jesus, would make a bunch of noise to Jesus. And then Jesus would overcome him. And the Bible says that the devil would, Satan would go away for a season. Why did he go away for a season? His season was over. That means that God gives the enemy opportune times to test you. To present to you. He can't do it all day long. He can't do it every day. He can't do it for months. He couldn't test Job all the time. He had to get permission. God, you got a hedge about <clears throat> Shavana. You got a head about Lady Tracy. You got a head about Tessie. You got a hedge about Stephanie. You got a hedge about Linda K. You got a hedge about, see who else on here? Ashley. You got a hedge about, I don't see no other names. You got a hedge about these people. Periscope. You got a hedge about these people. And it means that moving forward, 24, aura. You got a hedge about aura. You got a hedge about them. And the devil, God said, I trust you because I'm going to keep you from evil. That's what it says. I'm going to keep you from evil. He's keeping you from evil. Even though evil presents itself, he said, I'm keeping you from it. He said, it's now coming to time. I speak it. I see it. I feel it. I know it's thus said the Lord that the enemy comes to try you at seasonal times. He cannot do it all the time. He does not have free range all the time. And this season today, when I I read them scriptures. It leaped up off the page in Jeremiah 47. Said that that Pharaoh the king had a, was making noise, but his appointed time has now passed. Now the season of the Lord in your life, the time of harvest, the time of rain, to moisture your ground, whatever it is, put your seed in the ground because now I speak. Your ground is now pliable. It is now ready. It is now ready to receive what you have been carrying. You've been carrying this thing for a while. You've been carrying it for a while. 
You've been carrying it for a while. You've been incubating it. You've been praying over you like, God, I'm scared. I want to do this thing. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to believe you for it, but I'm scared I might be let down. I'm scared you might not give it to me. But the season of the devil appointed time has now moved over. He wasn't talking but a bunch of noise. And I speak over you right now. I seal it in the name of Jesus. I declare it that you will see the harvest in the next couple of days, in the next couple of days, in the next couple of days. And you go say, I feel it. If you receive it and you believe it, you receive it, you believe it, then you sow. Then you do what you believe. You do. I'm going to put it in here right now while y'all watching. I'm going to see, Kim, would it let me um, put in a comment? Right now, I'm going to put my seed in the ground. My seed in the ground. This is up to you. If you believe this, I'm going to see what it let me uh, uh, put it in here. I'm going to see what let me do it over here in Periscope. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just obeying God because this one thing I, I say I'm going to do, I'm not going to be afraid to do what the spirit of God is telling me to do. And y'all, anybody know about the boycotting of uh, TBN and Word Network? I am boycotting it. Uh, I, I had stopped watching it years ago anyway. I was watching it periodically because one time I heard Matt say years and years ago when, um, what's his name? Uh, Fred Price, Dr. Fred Price was doing a teaching on racism. And he was doing a uh, 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 teaching on racism. Uh, anyway, I thought I could pin it on Periscope. He was doing the teaching on racism. And I heard Matt say, Matt Crouch say, oh, I guess uh, that Dr. Fred Price must be wrong about racism. And that's when I knew, I said something that spirit, sometimes they don't even realize they racist. It is so innate, it is so ingrained that racism, it is so real, y'all. We have to watch it as African American people or any white person watching me. Y'all, it be so innate, it be so ingrained, you don't even realize it. You don't even realize that it's in you. You don't even realize that you are racist, that it is hate. Racism is a form of hate. To hate a person because of their skin color is crazy. You got to be delusional. Something got to be wrong with you to hate someone because of their skin color. We do it. It's been taught. It's been taught. We're all the same. We all bleed the same. When you go get a blood transfusion, you get white blood, Asian blood. You don't know what kind of blood you get. It. But blood is blood. <laughs> Blood is blood. And you're going to be upset because of a pigmentation of somebody's skin. I'm going to tell you something. A black person asked me a question. A black male, black friend of mine, a guy, asked me years ago. He said, Linda, if you had the opportunity to change, go back and change the skin that you're in. If you got the opportunity to go back and say, God, make me over again. He didn't say God because he don't believe in God. He said, and ask God to be white instead of black. That's when I knew he had hatred for his own color. Y'all, I literally say it. He says, Linda, all that you know today, all that you see today about how black people are treated, how black people are killed, how black men are, are, are uh, 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 cast castrated, how black men are hung, how black men, black men is the biggest commodity. God made something about an African-American man. You're going to see the resurgence of the black man. I'm telling you, just like I've been speaking it for a year, you're going to see the, that's the reason why the enemy want to kill the black men. That's the reason why the enemy want the black man dumb and stupid. But the black man, baby, when a black man speaks, especially when you hear a man of authority, black, you want to listen. And that's the reason why all of us want a black, white, White women, black women, black men, white men all want the black male. It's uh, because God has put an anointing especially differently on them. It ain't no, uh, uh, you can call it whatever you want to call it. God ain't no respect to person, but he is respected of what he has put in place. Anyway, the guy asked me, Linda, would you like to go back and make your color be different? Y'all just as sure as my name, Linda K. Lee. Linda K. Holly Lee. I said everything in me. If I had a choice to redo it, to go all the way back and make a decision on whether what 
pigmentation, how dark my pigmentation would be. I said and emphatically, I would not change my color. Knowing everything I know, knowing everything that my race went through, knowing everything that my forefathers went through, knowing everything because of the color of their skin. They are the most hated people ever because of the anointing. Because, But you know what? I believe that God gave us something extra. Those that got a darker pigmentation of endurance an ability to get through things, an ability to go through things like no other race on this earth. And I'm telling you to rise up in your pigmentation, baby. Rise up in what God has anointed you to be. Even though if God said, Linda, if I give you an opportunity to go back and choose what color you want to be, what skin color, I will say, I want to be this color right now. I want to be this shade this right now, how I look right now, how I get what it is right now. Only thing I might would change is you could have gave me a little bit more in the back or you could have gave me some thicker hair. No, but my skin, who the skin I'm in, my skin represent God. My color, your color, I don't care if you light, red, green, your skin color represents something in the earth realm for God. God wants to use me in this body. God wants to use you in that body. I don't care if you this color of my, my glasses, dark as my glasses or light as this paper. I don't care what you are. Light in this paper. I don't care what you are. That didn't make me look even a little more glory and putting that white up there. I would not change who I am in my skin. I hate how we're being treated. I hate that, but God has given you an endurance. I'm going to let you go. God has given you an anointing and an endurance. I'm telling you, come forth in your car. Be, when I say be, be, uh, uh, be black and be proud. Be white and be proud. Whatever your skin color is, be yellow and be proud. Be green and be proud. Be red and be proud. God has given everyone, he said, one blood. The Bible, God says, from one blood, all of us come from. One blood is in the book of Acts. Go read it. From one blood, the whole nation. And God says, not only one blood, he says, I have given all of you all a geographical location to be born. Baby, I ain't taught that in years. But you have been given a geographical location to be born in Africa. To be born in Tuscaloosa. You might have been born from this parent of Tuscaloosa, but God going to move you to Italy. That's me. That's me. I don't know why, but that's something about Italy. Look at my that my sign. My, you might can't see it real good on the on here. But this, I got two pictures of Italy. I bought these pictures years ago. And I went to Italy last year. Barcelona, Spain, and I went to Italy. I went to Napa. I went on to Spain. And because it stayed in my face, now in my face is Paris. That's what's in my face. I'm going there next. That's, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, but I'm going to get there. And God going to make it happen, just like he did of Spain. So I'm speaking to you all. Be glad for the skin you are. If I had to do it over, I would do it over just like this. Somewhere I must have asked God, I'll go. I'll go in this skin tone and I'm good with it, God. And I will make a difference and you're going to make a difference in the things of God. Your ground is now pliable. Your ground has now received spiritual rain for you to produce. Go forward and who you are and your skin color and nothing else will hinder you or hinder people from blessing you. You are blessed to be a blessing. So I pray that you receive this on today. I will see you all next Wednesday, giving a thankful heart, 6 a.m. And I'm going to think about changing it to 12 noon. But I hope y'all was blessed. Love you guys. See you next time.